Uh, Keith, welcome. Let's start with the macro. Uh, we were just talking about this with Dan Niles. How concerned are you about what's going on in Europe? I mean, certainly from a human, humanitarian perspective, but when it comes to the broader economy, when it comes to impact on demand and stocks, are we, are we able to assess that yet? I think it's still a little bit early uh, to, to really understand the assessment, but you can screen for risk factors, right? And so um, it, if you think about enterprise software in particular, um, it takes a while for those demand impacts to get into the system, to see it in the pipelines and the close rates. But you can screen the space for what parts of software are going to be most protected and what, what are going to be most at risk uh, of macro disruption potentially. Stuff that's most protected is going to be your security spending. Um, that's not going to change. Uh, people still have to really shore up their defenses there. Your large digital transformations, we think those are going to have uh, solid funding behind them, particularly coming from large enterprises. On the riskier side of the equation would be stuff that has to focus on the consumer, uh, marketing spend uh, is, is going to be more volatile, or uh, stuff like collaboration software, which is, tends to be shorter cycle. So we focus on the parts of the equation that are going to be most durable, even if you do have some macro disruption, and then match that with where you see the best valuations. And if you take that perspective, you can still find some really nice risk rewards in the market, and, and in software in particular. So how much can valuations contract even in the areas and with the stocks that you like? I mean, if we do, do go through a bumpier time uh, macro-wise, um, is there more risk perhaps than investors are considering at the moment? When, when we look at the, the multiples, multiples have come in uh, a lot in software uh, really since November. If you look at broadly across the group, uh, we look at stuff like EV to sales multiples, uh, your enterprise value divided by your forward sales. Uh, if you look at it on an absolute basis, the group overall has uh, pulled back almost 40%. That's a pretty big correction. Uh, the levels that we've gone to, we think are pretty interesting. We look at those EBITDA sales multiples on a growth adjusted basis. So what are you paying for every percentage point of growth? And the levels that we've pulled back to, if you look at sort of when we bottomed on last Monday, those levels were spot in line with what we saw in uh, late March of 2020 and is in line or actually below uh, the five-year average and, and below even the five-year average before we saw this really nice period of software uh, multiples rising uh, uh, during, during COVID. So the valuations in our perspective have gotten to a point where they're pricing in disruption. Uh, investors think something is going to happen. It's just what level of disruption. I think what you're worried about more is are the forward estimates going to come down? Are, are people going to have to revise down their revenues? And that's what you like about software. Software tends to have very durable fundamentals. A lot of this is recurring revenues, meaning it's already on the balance sheet. It's just going to amortize onto the income statement. So software can prove more durable than a lot of the other spaces out there when it comes to the absolute fundamentals. So you have a good level of, of multiples. You have fundamentals that probably prove more durable than people fear. Mm -hmm. So, Keith, what do you make then of recent deal making in software, particularly Toma Bravo's buyout of Anaplan? This wasn't the cheapest or the most battered cloud name. So what does it tell you about valuations and the rest of the space and appetite, not just from private equity, but perhaps the big tech players? Yeah, I think it's a really good validation point of what we're seeing in terms of attractive valuations. These financial buyers are seeing as good valuations as well. Like you said, Anaplan, it wasn't the, the least expensive or the most beaten up. Um, but if you look at the multiple that they were taken out at, um, that's well above where the average Smith cap software stocks play. So Anaplan got taken out about 11.5 times EV to sales. The average uh, small mid cap stock in our coverage group is trading at about seven times. So that shows a lot of potential value in that small mid cap space. And I do think there are more acquirers out there than we've seen historically. There's a lot of the, the larger vendors. Um, I, would, I would point to like a VMware or a Cisco or an IBM. We're still trying to buttress their, their software exposure. Obviously, we don't know about any particular deals, but these are vendors that we think will have an appetite for, for more software, as well as some of the cloud vendors. Um, they're, they're looking to go up the stack, if you will, get higher level functionality. And there's a lot of interesting assets in software right now.